coming up on this edition of Able to Cook. We talk about the history of the bagel and the humble beginnings from Poland. All that and much more when this edition of Able to Cook, the only program that focuses on cooking and people with special needs. All that and much more when Able to Cook starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on the abilities of cooking despite your disabilities. I'm Lauren Seiler. On this, uh, on this yummy show, as we say, uh, on this yummy show, we talk about the history of the bagel and its humble beginnings today on Able to Cook and how it came from Poland. So let's... Um, begin with the history of the bagel. Um, and you'll see pictures on your screen of what it looks like and the beginnings of it. So, um, the history of the bagel, and this comes from Wikipedia, uh, you know, definitions as well. Uh, the history of the bagel is actually Yiddish, um, is actually Yiddish, and uh, it's pronounced bagel, which is Polish, um, and spelled B. The actual American spelling is B-A-G-E-L, but the Polish spelling is B-A-I-G-I-E-L. I'll repeat it again. The Polish spelling of bagel is B, um, sorry, is B B A B A J. sorry, B-A-J-G-I-E-L. That's the Polish spelling. Or also spelled B I B E I G E L, um, but the but the American spelling again is B A G E L, and it's a bread roll um, originated in Jewish communities of Poland. Bagels are traditionally made of yeasted wheat dough <clears throat> that is shaped by hand into a torus or ring, as you can see here, and I'll, um, I'm basically going to take it from here. So this is what it looks like. I don't want the thing to drop. So it has a hole in the middle of it, and um, it's made from yeasted wheat dough shaped by hand into a torus or ring, briefly boiled in water, then baked. As a result of the dense, chewy, doughy interior with a browned and sometimes crisp exterior. Bagels are often topped with seeds or baked on the outer crust. Traditional choices include poppy seeds and sesame seeds. Um, by the way, a word of caution uh, for you adults out there. Um, poppy seeds mimic marijuana and mimic drugs. So do not eat a poppy seed bagel when you're going for a job interview because um, it will mimic drugs. Um, bagels are often topped with sesame seeds on the outer crust. Uh, traditional choices, again, are poppies and sesame seeds with salt grains. Different types of, um, different types include whole grain, rye, whole grain and rye. The basic roll with a whole design is hundreds of years old and allows the cooking and baking of the dough. It allows groups of bagels to be gathered uh, on a string or dowel um, for handling, transportation, and retail display. The earliest known mention of a boiled and baked ring-shaped bread can be found in the 13th century. A Syrian cookbook, which is referred to as a, as, as a kayak, K-A-A-K, that's a, a, 
uh, um, that's the spelling, bagel-like bread known as um, a, a Auschwitznik, or um, common earlier in Poland, uh, the bagel can be seen with royal family accounts uh, from, from 1394. Bagels have been widely associated with Ashkenazi Jews since the 17th century. They were first mentioned in 1610. A Jewish community, um, the Jewish community, the Jewish community ordinances of Krakow, Poland. Uh, bagels are now a popular bread uh, product of North America and Poland, especially in cities with a large Jewish population. Bagels are sold fresh or frozen and in many flavors in supermarkets. Linguist Leo Rosden wrote The Joys of Yiddish by a first known mention of the Polish word bagel. Uh, derived from the Yiddish word bagel in community regulations of the city of Krakow in 1610, which uh, stated <clears throat> that the food was given as a gift for women um, in childbirth. There is some evidence that the bagel may have ma been made in Germany before being made in Poland. In the 16th and... In the 16th and first half of the 17th century, the, the bagel became a staple of Polish cuisine. The name derives from Yiddish bagel, uh, from the German dialect word burgel, which means ring or bracelet. Variants of the word bagel are used in Yiddish and Austrian German uh, and refer to similar form of a sweet filled pastry. Um, a pastry filled poppy, with poppy seeds and a pastry filled with ground nuts. Uh, the term is used in southern German dialects where the word bag refers to um, a wood pile. According to the Merriam Webster Dictionary, bagel derives from the, transliterat <coughs> the transliteration of of uh, Yiddish or the English ring uh, to bend or bow. Uh, similarly, similar, similar uh, words, according to the dictionary, uh, is that of the Middle High German form, which is derived by Austrian German uh, bagel or kind of croissant, which is similar to German. Uh, to a German bugle or stirrup or ring. Um, in the Brick Lane district surrounding area of London, bagels spo um, spelled B-E-I-G-E-L-S have been sold since the middle 19th century and have been displayed in windows of bakeries of vertical wooden dowels or or in a meter's length of racks. Bagels were brought to the United States by, Im by immigrant Polish Jews with a thriving business developing in New York City that was controlled by the bagel, the bagel bakers of Local 338, which had contracts for nearly all bagel bakeries around the city and for, and for its workers, who prepared all their bagels by hand. The bagel came into general use through North America in the last quarter of the 20th century with automation. Daniel Thompson stated that the first commotion, commercially viable bagel machine in 1958, bagel baker Henry Lender, I'm sorry, Harry Lender, <clears throat> and his son Murray Lender, and also Florence Sender released this technology that pioneered automated production of the, the 
distribution of frozen bagels in the 1960s. Murray also invented the pre-slicing, uh, invented pre-slicing the bagel. Around 1900, the bagel brunch became popular in New York City. The bagel brunch consists of a bagel top with lox, cream cheese, capers, tomato, red and red onion, which is seen. Um, let me get to that. Um, don't worry, we'll see the pictures later. Um, and bagel socks, capers, uh, tomato and red onion, and then similar combinations and toppings that remain associated with bagels into the 21st century in the United States. In Japan, the first kosher bagels were brought, brought by Bagel K from New York in 1989. Bagel K created the first green tea, chocolate, maple nut, and banana nut flavors on the market in Japan. Some Japanese bagels, such sold by Bagel and Bagel, are soft, sweet, and others such as Einstein Brothers. Bagels are, cut, are sold by Costco in Japan and the same with you in the U.S. Um, now, there's, um, a section here, similar breads. Um, many cultures develop similar breads and preparations such as the, um, the bubbliki in, in Russia and, and, uh, and the, and in Ukraine, it's, um, uh, and in Ukraine and Belarus, uh, it, it's called something else. In Poland, similar in appearance to bagels. These breads are usually topped with sesame seeds and poppy seeds. The ingredients of these breads and bagels differ somewhat. But breads um, are made with a different dough using butter and sometimes also milk. Um, so let so let's go. Uh, let me just um, okay. So um, So since we're talking about bagels, um, according to Smithsonian Magazine, there's an interesting article, um, bagels and locks are, hold on, let me get to it, bagels and locks are, un, are a uniquely American creation. Um, locks did not originate in New York City, nor did bagels. But putting them together, um, they are distinctly a New York creation. So as you can see from the picture here, from the Smithsonian Magazine, I don't know if I can, uh, let me see if I can, uh, no, I, I oops. Um, let's go back to that. Yeah, there we go. So um, this comes from, the Smithsonian Magazine, www.smithsonian.mag.com. Uh, sorry, smithsonianmag.com. Um, let's get rid of that ad. Uh, we don't need to see that. Locks didn't um, originate in New York City, nor did the bagels, but it, New Yorkers who figured that out by putting them together in uh, a combination. But let's go to... Um, According to this, locks came from Scandinavia where fishermen mastered the art of preserving salmon in saltwater brine. Um, bagels were the first that um, were the first glimpsed on the Silk Route to China and refined in Italy in the 14th century. And it's a smoked fish. Um, 
but we can um, go here. Okay, this is very interesting. The history of bagels and lox. Um, lox originated in Scandinavia where fishermen and in Sweden perfected the art of preserving salmon in saltwater brine uh, through the 19th century. Bagels are somewhat older, but alleged uh, first spotted on the silk of China before going to Italy in the 14th century. Um, but the story of how they came to be and enjoyed together uh, took interesting facets. Um, now, it started in a church of the 12th century and in, in, uh, through a 1930s fad for eggs, Benedict, and unique there's um started with unique rules of jewish dietary law one version is that thanks to a church ban jewish bakeries of the 12th century poland it came to pass that jews were only allowed to work with bread um that that has since been boiled hence the bagel was the first reference of the bagel written in Yiddish to appear in 1610 and massive, uh, massively popular among Jews in Eastern Europe. It came to them in the American uh, 19th and 20th centuries. And what is lox or salmon? There are several reasons. Firstly, that uh, fish is considered to be part of it. So let me explain that word since we're talking about kosher. Parv, parv P-A-R-E-V-E, -E, uh, which can be eaten in both dairy and a meat meal. And secondly, where meat and so many requirements uh, in terms of slaughtering and preparation and is to be classified as kosher. Um, it was easier to buy a whole kosher fish um, than from non-Jewish stores. And also the preservation technique required locks uh, minimize the need for refrigeration um, for essential quality in the 20th, in the early 20th century. And as you let me see if I can um, go down here. How it all came together was partly due to the 1930s demand of eggs Benedict. Two halves of an English muffin, uh, a bagel is not an English muffin, but uh, similar to a bread. So let me hold it up again so you can see what the bagel looks like. And I'm going to split it in half. So it's not an English muffin. Okay. Um, the bagel was developed with locks. And a schmear. A schmear, a schmear is the word, a word for cream cheese smear on a bagel. Uh, and a kosher alternative, according to Jewish culinary historian Gil Marx, uh, this was uh, unique to, to Jews in New York. Uh, Jewish communities in Poland had traditionally spread schmaltz. Schmaltz is another word. Schmaltz is um, basically chicken fat um, with butter and a bunch of other things uh, on their bagels, um, eating them with chulent. Chulent is another food, uh, which we will do another show about Jewish foods. Uh, chulent is like a, um, a version of beef stew or other various soups and a dinner roll. The dish is considered an ideal substitution, still delicious with plenty of protein and similar creaminess replacing salmon, salmon for ham, um, cream cheese for hollandaise sauce, and, a, and sliced bagel halves for English muffins. And it reminisces loved ones uh, then and now. The one and most popular things eaten in New York and Jewish Americans everywhere. Today, there are five key ingredients to the, to the lox and bagel, obviously. 
cream cheese, sliced onion, and a generous spoonful of capers. So, um, capers are little, look like little flower buds, but they, they're um, almost in the pickle family, almost. Um, uh, now, um, spoonful of capers. Uh, cream cheese is spread on the bagel first and locks added on top, followed by the onion and the capers. As for the bagel itself, it need not be plain. Sesame seed, poppy seed, or, or wholemeal are fine, but um, don't ask for a sweet bagel uh, like a raisin bagel. And it ruins it if it's um, if a sweet bagel is on locks. Uh, today, um, and the perfect lazy weekend brunch dish. Healthy, wholesome, and super easy. Uh, you know, everybody should try it. Um, it. Now, there are different types of salmon for a bagel. So I'm going to... Um, Salmon for bagels. Okay. So, um, the the trick is. So let me show you another picture here of what the bagel would look like. Let's see if I can. I don't know if, oh, it doesn't. Oops. Sorry. Hold on. Oh, there we go. I'm getting to uh, the bagel here. I'm trying to. So, yeah, I'm trying to get to a picture. There we go. Um, it's basically. You put the onions and everything, uh, we don't have that here, but uh, uh, everything on top. And um, so there's a difference in terms of locks. Usually, sometimes, uh, if, it's, if it's cured longer, it tastes better. Or it depends if you like a lot of salt very little salt so it you know you can go to a store and get um get different types of fish to put on top of your uh bagel so it all depends on the situation um what uh type of bagel now let me just show you this again uh again the bagel has different types of seeds in it and you can get and as you can see here um uh, now, if you have allergies, it's best um, to um, basically get a plain bagel. But it, let, let's just go over allerg food allergies really quick. Um, the most common ones uh, for those that uh, are allergic to stuff. So when you order bagels or make a bagel... Um, um, so if you want to find out more about food allergies, um, here, you can, um, you can, uh, go, um, to this website. So it's www.foodallergystrategies.com. Again, foodallergystrategies.com. So, um... If you have a food allergy, you uh, you can go to this website, um, and you know. So, uh, food allergy facts. Um, you know, on the top of this, you can click there. So, the most common food allergies are um, uh, seeds, almonds, uh, and anything that might make people sick. That's why it's best. Um, to um, to get a plain uh, plain piece of bread 
or something like that, or usually use plain butter. Um, but, you know, consult with your uh, doctor when you are dealing with food allergies. Um, again, www.foodallergystrategies.com. That website, once again, is www.foodallergystrategies.com. Um, and you can, if you have, um, uh, if you have allergies, you can click there. Um, and please consult your doctor if you also need an EpiPen, which is a needle um, that can test your allergies when you're, especially when you're going out to eat and, and different things like that. So uh, thank you for joining me on this edition of um, Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, uh, concerns, and achievements of people in the kitchen, um, and uh, you know, and we focus on uh, people that are not afraid of the kitchen. And um, again, I'm Lawrence Seiler. Stay tuned for the next edition of Able to Cook. Stay tuned for more. I'm Lawrence Seiler. Hold on. I'm Lauren Seiler. Stay tuned for the next edition of Able to Cook. This has been the history of the bagel.